morning, everybody. Did anybody else get a must update Zoom notification before joining today? I didn't happen to get one, but it doesn't mean it didn't go out to lots of other people, though. I didn't get one. Oh. Let's just be this computer I'm using wasn't updated recently, I guess. I guess I'll wait a few more minutes. It's nine o'clock by my clock, but... Looks like we're a little shy on attendees so far. We are. We've got uh, three of the five needed for a quorum at the moment. I know Chell thought he was not going to be able to make it today. Yeah. And then uh, Damon Doyle also let us know that he wasn't going to be able to make it. So we're down at least two. Okay. I'm still waiting for one. Let's see. Yeah, still waiting for one more. I'll give it one more minute. And get started and see where where it takes us. Okay. All right. Now I think we can start. We can. I don't think we got anybody new. I think maybe Jay logged out and logged yeah. back. Oh, mine. Yeah. I dropped out. Um, my connection dropped and I plugged back in. Okay, sorry. Yeah.
Well, it is 9.05. Um, we should start. If we don't have a quorum, we can at least do things unofficially here. We can at least talk about everything. Right. So well, I'll at least. run a roll call then real quick. Yep. Okay. Uh, Chair Tom Handy. Here. Uh, Council Chair Damon Doyle. He's not here. Let us know he wouldn't be here today. Uh, Council Vice Chair Todd Bayruther. Here. MVPE Committee Chair Jay Arnold. Here. BFRW Committee Chair Roger Haringa. Here. Uh, Council Member at Large Chell Anderson. We got the notice that he wouldn't be able to join us today potentially. He might uh, will join a little bit later. Uh, another council member, uh, Camp Matthew Hepner. Not seeing them online today. And then uh, council ex officio member, Representative Alex Rommel. Not seeing them online today either. So we are sitting with uh, four seats uh, represented and we need five for quorum. All right, well, I think it is probably prudent to at least have some discussions on some of these things um, going forward here, even if we can't take official action on it. Point of order, Dustin, I'm looking at the meeting minutes. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven members. The ex officio member doesn't count towards a quorum, I don't believe. Correct. I, so if, you if may be right on I, seven. Then I may be working. I got a bad note in my spreadsheet here. So if we need four, we are good to go with a uh, business. Then if we if we're not counting towards Alex Ramel, I yeah. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe that ex officio members count towards a quorum. So no, they don't. Right. So that that's my mistake. So we are we have do have a quorum of uh, four out of our group here today. Thanks, Roger. Thank you. Is there anybody from the public that would like to be recognized? Patrick. Yes, Patrick Hanks with the Building Industry Association of Washington here. Thank you. Thanks for joining, Dave. Good morning. My name is, name is Dave Cocott. I'm with the Spokane Fire Department, but I'm also the co-chair of the Washington State Association of Fire Marshals Legislative Committee. Thanks, Dave. Elizabeth? Yeah, I'm Elizabeth Torsky. I'm with Cascade Natural Gas. Thank you. All right. Thanks for joining. Anybody else? Josie. Hi, everyone. Josie Cummings with Avista. Thanks for joining. All right, I see no other hands. Uh, next thing on the agenda then is to review and approve the agenda. Entertain a motion to do such. So move, Jay. I will second that, Roger. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on the agenda before the vote? Um, I just wanted to uh, let everybody know I do have one other item under other business that I would like to bring up with this committee about the um, single exit tag that I volunteered for at the last council meeting. So that can come up under other business, nothing we need to vote on. Okay, thanks. All right, all those in favor of Moving the agenda signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Next on the agenda is to review and approve the minutes. We'll start with October 2nd, 2024. They were sent out or available online. Here's the October 2nd minutes. Yeah. 
end of those. And then here are the October 9th minutes. And that is the end of that document. All right, we'll, we'll do those separately. If somebody would like to make a motion on the first set. This is Todd, so moved. We have a second. Second, Jay. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on the October twenty October two twenty twenty four minutes? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next, we'll uh, take a motion on the. October 9th minutes. So moved. Roger. This Todd second. Moved and seconded. Any comments? Any discussion on this set? Hearing that all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Then, oops, and back up the agenda for you guys real quick. I guess uh, next thing on the agenda is the public comment for things that are not on the agenda. Is there any public comment? There is. Go ahead and raise your hands to be recognized. Quiet group. All right, let's move on then. Uh, item number five, request for council for authority to act on legislative matters proposal. This is something we've been working on for the last several meetings. So Dustin, you wanna take us to where we were? Yep, so this is what we had that we were sharing. There's no official document here um for that we've been working on but the goal is uh to ask the council for some authority to act um during the legislative session the the problem we're trying to address is that uh during the legislative session uh actions move too fast for the council to um act as a whole and so to be responsive to legislation we've sent out a letter to representative doer and um uh have uh, kind of requested that we need some more uh, uh, engagement prior to legislative session on draft bills. And then um, during session, if there's anything that we can take a position on in order to call the whole council together um, to get a council position together, uh, takes a little bit of time. And by the time it um, we can get that position developed, things can have already moved beyond where it's the most appropriate uh, point in the legislative session for us to um, make a testimony um, in that regard. So um, the what we've been discussing here as a group is what we would like to ask the council to be able to do. And um, for the most part, as far as uh, acting on behalf of the council as this group, we're looking to be able to uh, testify or to inform committees and legislative staff and to testify testify and advocate for the amendments to the bills on the technical application within our SBCC policy and procedures, not necessarily on the qualitative nature of the bill. So um, if the bill says you shall put in uh, gold doorknobs on every building, we're not necessarily trying to say we don't like gold doorknobs, but we're trying to say that if you want us to do it um, 
the, in a way that affects our process in a way negatively that we want to try to align um, the rulemaking process as required um, by the bill with what we already have going on with our triennial code adaption cycle and to try not to um, throw speed bumps or wrenches in our machine uh, with legislation that requires us to act outside of our normal cycle. And we kind of have a, a little bit of a draft here. Um, and so we kind of have left off here and we were talking about some principles um, for uh, bringing to the council. And the hope is here at this next council meeting that we'll have a, a good idea for a motion to bring to the council to allow the legislative committee to act in, in a manner that's uh, in alignment with what the council um, is looking for um, without necessarily taking a position on a the, the effect of a bill. So with that, that's my quick introduction on that one. I think most folks here have been um, privy to the conversation so far and um, I will turn it back over to you, Mr. Tom. Okay, so on the first, on A there, inform on timelines of implementation, I think that you were heading towards with regard to the SBCC normal adoption schedules. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So I guess, you know, we can kind of open all this up for discussion here. You know, one of the things that that has kind of always concerned me, you know, both on the council and off, you know, is some of these things are that that come up become very technically challenging based on current technology um and do we want to have any input um from our experts with regard to that um maybe some of these ideas that are coming forward are a little ahead of time you know and maybe a few year more years in the implementation cycle might be advisable um, according to, you know, the technical experts that we've assembled here on the, the council. Um, it also might help to eliminate some litigation that we get ourselves into by trying to push, you know, certain things through maybe ahead of, ahead of the market, I guess I should just say, you know, in general. So... Those are my personal thoughts. I'm just kind of curious what the rest of the group thinks about that. Mr. Chair, if I may. Sure. Um, it seems to me like that would be offering opinions to the legislature. Um, the legislature, part of their job is to push their uh, push the market. I believe, um, and you know, the state of Washington is uh, is leading in a number of different areas. Um, certainly, the energy code, and um, I think any argument that we are going beyond market is subjective, and I don't believe that it is the state building code councils. Um, responsibility to weigh that and that's something that the that's up to the legislature to have that discussion in my opinion Todd yeah I don't know how to raise hands anymore um, so I guess the question to me is, um, do we act as an agency? Because um, we, we've talked a lot about the power of the legislature, the authority of the, of the council, but you know, other states have, have administrative agencies that often both write the code, but also represent the, the stakeholders. So whether it's building officials, so forth, like all those parties obviously can come testify and, and take a position on, on certain bills, but the act of code, you know, of rulemaking of developing codes needs somebody to, to be able to give subject matter expert 
to expertise to. And I, I think this starts to get there. And I say we can you know, we can advocate and, and inform as to the technical application. I, I worry it doesn't go far enough though, because um, I think we already kind of do that. We've we've had in the past, um, you know, when Stoyan was here, he would go and, and be able to call balls and strikes on on as an agency as DES and say, you know, here's what it means for us to do that. We need certain budget. We need whatever timelines, it doesn't align with the, the code app the implementation, et cetera. Um, what we don't have is somebody like when we, you know, in other areas where the agency comes in and, and talks about the actual subject matter. So um, we, I thought we were maybe moving down that path. You know, Jay had recommended that we, you know, maybe set an actual agenda and like any other, you know, body and, 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 and say, this is what we can talk about to the legislature, but I don't know if that's still on the table. Thank you. You know, I'll, go ahead, Jay. Yeah, and when I had thought about a, a legislative agenda, um, I was thinking more of the inner workings of uh, the SPCC and um, not in the policies that we create. And while I think that the uh, proceed the the um, document that we have here really gets to that that uh, procedure issue. Um, I I think what you're proposing, Tom, gets more into the policy uh, things that I, I think um, that is uh, best dealt with the just by the legislature and by individual um SPCC members testifying wearing their their professional hats, not their SPCC hats, because even within somebody that might have some expertise, they're one person on the um, SPCC within their industry, and there may be others on the industry as well. And so, um, I, I'm I think when we get into a something new right now where we're delegating, we're asking the full council to delegate authority to this committee. Uh, we've got to start very targeted. And that's why I think it should be around process, uh, which we have here around timeline. And then I'd like to see a 2B that talks about um, um, informing on um, or Yes, informing on not including specific code in legislation. And I think that by by focusing on process, I think we're in a, a good spot to um, have something that the full council can support and delegate this authority to so it could be effective. Thanks. Yeah, and I, I respect that, you know, and I think that that's kind of the way everything's eyes kind of gone anyway. You know, my my concern and as a, an elected official as well, you know, I'm I'm on a border in the border community, a border county here. And we've got a lot of people that are just refusing to do any more business in Washington because of the restrictions in the codes, especially the energy codes. Um, that are being put forward and it makes it so much more um economically feasible to just go across the state into Idaho the state line into Idaho and and conduct their business there. Um, we're seeing that too with a lot of the bigger companies, you know. Um, I don't know, you know, maybe we don't really have a role there and we're just the doers and not the the thinkers about the long-term causes and effects about these things and we just need to, you know, kind of take our marching orders and, and march along and do it. Um, I'm sorry that I kind of have some fundamental disagreements with that approach, but, you know, that's just my opinion. Roger? Yeah, I have a, a couple things. I, I was thinking of how to respond to your comment. Uh, I'm so first off, uh, this is my first time on the legislative committee. And I will be honest, I'm <clears throat> have been on the council for two and a half years, and I'm still learning how state government runs necessarily. But I would assume, Tom, that 
any consideration of a bill on the economic impact, which is kind of what you had just um, voiced, uh, would would be handled by a different a different part of the a different agent state agency. I'm not sure necessarily which that is, but I don't believe that that's the state building code council council's responsibility to um, to address that and provide our input that's not technical code you know code consideration so that's that would be my response to your comment um i have a couple of comments on 2a uh i would like 2a to be either you either we add a 2c but you know 2a kind of talks about schedules i actually think that it should be more uh inform on timelines or inform inform on implementation in relation to sbcc policies and procedures um if we are asked to do something that is and maybe actually dustin i'm kind of thinking i see you're you've are is the schedule aspect included in our policies and procedures maybe but so either broaden A into policies and procedures or keep the schedule and timeline comment and then um, add another one. So, and then I'm not sure, Jay, if you're the second one that's now shown as C. Um, you know, one of the things that we are faced with in the, actually the code, the, the single exit, tag is there has been legislation um legislation was passed that straddles both the residential code and the building code and i would like i'm not saying i would like i think it would be advantageous if there is a bill um you know if we can direct a bill uh to uh I'm just going to say to make it more easy for us to adopt, <laughs> you know, what the, the way that the single exit was passed makes it hard for us because we need to straddle this line between residential code and, and building code. Um, if that had, if, if we had been able to weigh in at that point and said, you know, make it, don't tell us it has to be in the building code, which is, I think what, what it says right now it may very well work better in the residential code. And that is a, a piece of information that we could inform the legislators on. Uh, so maybe that is covered in, in Jay's item C there. Um, I'm not sure, maybe not, I, I, it's a question. And then I actually have an item three that I would like to add. Being on the uh, SBC last time that I was not part of the legislative committee, I believe that there was a report that we provided to the SBCC, to the full council. And it was, here are the bills that we are tracking. And, you know, we did offer input on this bill. You know, the, the bill number two, we're just tracking. We haven't really done anything. So basically inform the council, the greater council of what bills we are offering our thoughts, um, you know, and expertise to. So some reporting be mechanism back to the council of our activities. And I will now lower my hand and let others comment. Angela? Um, yeah, um, can you hear me? Yep. Just making sure. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to respond a little bit to some of the comments. I mean, I don't know the SBCC, I don't know that it's it's our place to give, you know, opinions on legislature. I think giving input and just like knowledge, backstory, you know, things like that to it, I think is appropriate. Um, and then I think I was under sort of the impression that this um, this new this legislative committee authority motion 
was sort of in reaction to last session when the bill was passed that for the woo, I think it was the wooey or whatever, where we needed to give testimony, but the legislative committee couldn't really get things together in a timely manner without taking it, you know, taking it to the full council and back and things. Um, and I thought this was kind of to help give authority that they could in fact do that if need be so that we could give feedback more towards the beginning of a bill instead of when it's too late. I don't know if any of this is making sense. Um, but um, I think it's, I thought it was something along those lines. Was I, am I right in that sort of? Yeah, I think so. You okay. know, we're just trying to put the guardrails around that. Okay. You know, to see to what extent we can do that and under what circumstances. Okay, yeah, because I was just thinking that trying to give our sort of opinion, if it doesn't necessarily have something to like affecting our authority, I don't know if we as a full council want to start getting into sparring matches with legislators on our opinions on it. I think that's what sort of the private groups or the professional groups those are the ones that sort of give the testimony and the pros and cons versus I think we're more, I think supposed to be sort of neutral, but maybe I'm wrong. No, I think you're probably right. You know, the other thing that, and I'm sorry, Jay, I'll get right there. You know, the other thing that was concerning to me too is, you know, the, the amount we spend on litigation and defense, you know, upon some of the you know actions that we we take and so if there's any way to try and avoid that and i don't know exactly how that might be you know what kind of future we'd have to be able to see and predict you know to avoid that and some of it's probably unavoidable um but those are just kind of the things that were circulating in my head as as goals is so jay uh, a couple of pieces of feedback on on Roger's comments. Um, maybe this is a 2D, uh, but I, I do think that um, given that our work is based in the international code, um, informing on the uh, structure and status of the international code on particular topics of interest. For example, in, in Roger's example, single exit stairways to be able to inform and say, hey, look, this is this this touches multiple codes. We shouldn't be specific in what what happens. Uh, we've heard within our SPCC discussions that uh, ICC may be taking on a particular topic um, for the next revision of the code that that may be worthwhile of informing legislators on that that. Um, that one, they might not need to act, or if they choose to act, to recognize that um, it may be something they need to think of as temporary. But maybe that gets to the fee to the issue you were bringing up, Roger. Thank you. So, I, Todd, thank you. Yeah, it sounds like I'm a little bit of I'm a minority here in, in the sense that I also would desire that the legislative committee and the council is actually informing the legislature they 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 want you know input on this and i think there's a difference between you know when i was a state employee at washington state university i informed a lot of committees and 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 uh, even gave testimony on the subject matter um and in this case and they were, they were not opinions. I was not on the government affairs team. It was very clear that line between government affairs as Washington State University and then as a subject matter expert informing. And I guess my point here is that you can inform, somebody has to represent the code making process and and what it actually means to, um, you know, we have the building and fire officials that can obviously represent themselves on enforcement. We have subject, you know, special interest that are going to be there representing, you know, AIA is going to be there representing their, their, you know, discipline and their license, you know, professionals. 
Um, but no one's saying, hey, if you put in a single exit stair bill and then prescriptively say it shall be five stories of this over, you know, so forth and six stories max, five stories of residential, like that's very specific. And, and who's navigating and informing, giving them actual useful information on, on what to mandate yet give room for flexibility in the rulemaking process. That's that's my point. And I, I, I think that could be a little more done by the legislative committee. And then when a specific stance is taken, like we did in February, we went to the full council and they divided it up into two different actions. And, and that's how we um, gave that information. Todd, can I Thanks. clarify what your, your point um, ask for clarification? It seems to me like you are uh, drawing a line between inform and respond, where inform is an active, we are going out if we see something in a bill, we are actively, um, actively, um, you know, letting the, the legislator or the committees know rather than just responding if they come to us and ask a question is that your point is that or am i i guess my wrong yeah my question would be who is better positioned to represent all the work that's done in the tags all the work that's done in the committees all the work that's done on the council than the, than the you know representatives of the council um you know the the other special interests aren't going to be able to do that and then i don't think that staff should do that for us so and i agree we are the appointed council members i think we've got the largest collection of subject matter experts around building codes that i know of in the state you know i mean who who would be better to do it yeah i mean i, I just finished that off as we don't have a state agency that does that. California does, Oregon does, Colorado does. That works for the governor, right? We don't. We don't have that. We we were we have a legislative process. So, are we represented? Is, is the, are the codes represented well enough? Is maybe a better way to say it. This is nothing about authority, power, so forth. This is just are they represented? Angela, um, I I actually I really agree with the word inform. Because I think it is it's it is letting them know how this affects what can trickle down. It's not saying it's good, it's bad, but I do I like the I like the phrasing that Todd did with to inform them about what's going on. And like you said, especially like with what's coming down from ICC and things like that. So I yeah, I think that's that makes sense. So how do we frame that in words? Um, Tom, again, I think the way that it is written on screen is inform and, and the committee is, is act, asking for the authority to be active. So we are informing and I'm, I'm, so I, I, I don't know. Again, I'm. It seems to me the way that it is written, it includes that. But I'm, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe others are reading it differently. So okay, I had that that screen covered up with my view of the audience here, so I could see the hands. So I didn't see it all. Uh, Patrick. Yes. Um, if. If your goal is to only inform and to testify neutral and not to uh, be, you know, for or against any any bill or amendment, I think having the word advocate in there undermines that intention because typically in the legislative process, advocate is for when you're either arguing for or against something. Um, now you, if you're if the SBCC decides to sponsor a bill as an entity, which I think you have some capability to do, you might want to be able to advocate for that. Um, but for the most part, if you're trying to just inform, if you have in your your guidelines to say that you can advocate, 
I think it opens up in the future as things change or or as people forget the contents of this meeting. If the direction's not clear in what you're in the recommendation you're adopting, then it could open it up where that intention is forgotten and people start doing something else. So maybe you're suggesting that we advocate for things that the full council agrees with in taking positions on on a bill. I mean, like the one that's going forward right now or proposed. You know that we don't just piecemeal the code out to the the council. Is that what you're thinking? Uh, if 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 your goal is to have the legislative committee have a little bit of extended leeway in what it can do without getting permission from the council, and you want that to just purely be sort of testifying neutrally, I think having the word advocate in there undermines that. So I, if your if your goal is to do that, I would remove the word advocate. From the from the ability of the committee um, without getting council approval, if you want to be able to advocate after getting council approval, you know I'm, I'm just trying to help with the wording there to match what I you see. guys are talking okay. about intention wise. Todd, yeah, I think Patrick's getting to a good delineation here where it's true we we already have you know we would only oppose or or before or, or, or against a, uh, a bill if we took full council action. So like we did in February, that's what we did. And we split it up into two different, we're for this, we oppose this. The council spoke as a whole with, you know, all members present and so forth. Um, but I, I'm i arguing we do advocate for good codes. We do advocate for what the codes, the intent of the codes is for life safety, so forth. So I, I think we, I maybe would propose an, and number two, strength not on the qualitative nature. Sometimes there is qualitative nature of writing good codes. So um, I'll leave it there. Just thank you. Roger. Um, yeah, I was going to say the same thing, and I appreciate Patrick's perspective. We aren't advocate, but the way that it is written, or the way I am reading it, is. We are not advocating for or against the bill. We are advocating for amendments to bills on the technical application within the scope of SBCC policy and procedures. And I think that we should should be advocating for amendments to the bills um, for that for that purpose. But we are not saying the bill is is good or bad. We are advocating for amendments on the technical applications within the scope of our policies and procedures which i think is appropriate and and i do think what we are i do think that that is what we are asking for hey jay yeah and i i think that the the language here about advocating for amendments is is specific and deliberate to get to that particular point of saying you know we're we're not going to support or oppose a bill, but we are going to advocate for changes. And maybe we should be explicit. We're not going to support or oppose a bill without full SBCC authority. Um, and um, I foresee testimony being in the other category. Um, and AWC, uh, I'm sorry, the Association of Washington Cities will often do this pretty effectively in saying, we're other on this bill with concerns um, and will um, advocate for changes. So maybe we want to have something in the preamble or as a specific statement to say um, that the legislative committee will not support or oppose overall bills without full SBCC authorization, just to make that clear. And then on number two, maybe instead of qualitative nature, or um, uh, we say something like policy aspects and leave the whatever housing policy or energy policy or safety policy that um, the legislature is looking at out of it and keep it to uh, the process and implementation details. Thanks. 
Roger. Um, I, I like Jay's comments, and I was going to propose advocate for changes to bills for the technical um, rather than amendments. I mean, we aren't necessarily just doing amendments. We might just do rewording, right? Um, changes to bills to align. Uh, well, that doesn't. I was going to say just for the technical application within the scope but of our policy. Maybe um, with regard to with regard to. Yeah, yeah, that's that's better. And then Jay's comment about uh, again, I keep coming to, you know, if you have authority, you have responsibility. Right. And I think that we need to have three and may, item three and maybe four. Our responsibility is to report back to the state mm -hmm. public Code council. And I think also then maybe our responsibility is to not, and I Jay can maybe reword this better, but to uh, to not take policy positions without authority of the full council, uh, something like that. Um, so I, again, I I was that was my item three is I think we need to have some responsibility uh, bumpers on our authority as well, or or clear this is the responsibilities that we have back to the SBCC that we're gonna report to you and before we take any policy positions we would uh, not do that without the full council yes jay uh two things one is um <clears throat> and uh, just to get to what you're saying roger with changing amendments to changes um i i could foresee us actually proposing amendments and Sometimes in working with legislators in our city, we've actually said we we think you should make an amendment that changes this in this specific way. And I'd like to be able to uh, have that that capability if we wanted to suggest some wording changes. Um, I don't know if that's within what you had intended with your change from amendments to changes. Um, it in my mind, Jay, changes could be editing changes or it could be proposing amendments. So that's what that's what was in my head. Now, if we need to clarify that. Yeah. And I, I within the legislative arena, I don't know what that difference is, because um, you'll have a specific bill that you're talking about and the way that it gets changed editorial or otherwise is by a, a legislator proposing an amendment. Um, but that's after it's passed the first time, right? Or when it's in the crafting activity. process, then it's just a change. Is, is that true? Or when it's an amendment, it's after something has already gone past a certain point. Okay. That's, that's, I'm thinking like maybe a striker from within a committee, uh, but uh, you've got a good point, Tom, if we're also talking about something like we're doing with uh, Representative Dewar on a pre- bill submission so right maybe right. that okay so i'll walk back that particular comment because maybe we're, we're getting to um we're getting to that secondly uh i like the requirement to report back to the sbcc um i would like some language in that that says that staff will report back to the sbcc on actions taken because i don't want to have to wait to the next legislative committee meeting to get officially approved minutes. If we have a quorum issue, I think the most important part of that is the full SBCC being informed and whether that's a um, staff email um, versus um, something officially approved by the committee. I, I tend to focus on being expedient. I think that's a good point. Patrick? Yeah, j just so you know, the only way that you change a bill is by amendment. Um, there are no, like, even if it's an editorial change, it has to be done via amendment. Amendment. They can't change a bill without an amendment, just so you know. So if we were to maybe put both those in there, changes or amendments, because if before the bill is dropped, we might just make changes or suggest changes. And after it hits the floor, then it's an amendment. Okay. A couple of small things on the first line. Um, 
take the capital H out of has, but then in that sentence, uh, right up top, legislative committee has, um, and then at the end of that sentence to propose legislation during session, maybe during session isn't important. It's, it could be before session, it could, because they're obviously bills are being proposed and developed right now to be dropped in December. How do we incorporate that? Just pull out the during session? Maybe, or say before or during whatever, whatever the will of people is. And that might carry forward into item number one as well, because, you know, just with, like with regard to the thing that we've got to talk about next, there might be something of concern to the whole council that we need to get ahead of right away. So if you could take out during session only on item number one. Roger. Um, I have two. I will talk to the first one about, I just, I'm looking at item. Um, now, where did it go? <laughs> I appreciate uh, pulling up with the requirements. Um, monitor, monitor. Means the legislative committee. Doesn't it say that, where did I read that? Um, we can call meeting special meetings at any time. I think that you're just looking maybe at number six, but it's the legislative committee. Maybe oh, called. that's okay. All right, then then number one is good. We can call a a full council meeting. I'm you know I guess I'm. I, I yeah that's fine if we want to keep that in there. Um, and then my I have a question for Patrick. And again, this is because I don't have a whole lot of experience in how bills are um, the whole pro legislative process. But I, I, the, my question is, could this committee propose editorial changes prior to the bill being submitted or adopted, like we're being asked to, and Dustin is going to bring up Representative Dewar's um, you know, proposed legislation now. Um, couldn't that be a, the, this committee suggests you do that. And that's prior to the official, uh, you know, introduction of the bill. And so then it wouldn't be amendments. And I'm, again, I'm, I'm asking more for my education than really needing to, you know, an edit to the, to the language necessarily. So it seems like in uh, number two, it addresses that with the word changes or amendments, because oh. changes would occur before the bill's got. Yeah, I didn't see that edit get put in there. I was looking someplace else. So, okay. I, but I, Patrick, I mean, is that does that align with your uh, comment? And I'm I appreciate. Um, Again, just my knowledge of how these things flow through the legislature. Yeah, um, uh, I guess I was referring more to like an official process. Once a bill has been um, introduced, the only way to change it is via amendment. But there are, you know, other changes like if it's in pre-drafting yeah. um, and you're going back and forth with staff on on working language, that would be changes. Um, what I've seen when I worked in the Oregon legislature in the finance and revenue committee, you know, the department of revenue had someone on staff that was there at almost every meeting and they would offer technical input on bills. They would never be for and against something. So it could be the most outrageous tax bill you've ever imagined in your life. And they would just say, we're neutral on it, but you know, here's a word you got wrong, or this would make it hard for us to implement this or, or something on that. Um, they might, be involved with changes if somebody said, well, how do we make that so it's implementable? And they might suggest, well, if you change it to this, then it could be implemented, but they never sort of waged for or against things. And I guess why I keep bringing this up is because sometimes th that's where you start getting more into the, the political realm of things. Sometimes legislators or people are proposing bills um, for reasons. And if you start advocating in a way that is for or against that, yeah. then the SBC starts engaging in 
in in politics and it's not necessarily what mainly what i'm just trying to advocate for is to protect the sbcc from from any damage that could come from that okay thank you and i i i am as we go through and edit this what you just described is exactly what i'm trying to get on paper um and i think that we by adding item four down there we have hopefully clarified that um so thank you patrick all right any any other comments? I think the the wording in four to me is a little clunky. I think responsibility is the first word isn't the right word, but the the premise of the statement I think is valid. Well, Tom, I, I always hesitate to comment on English grammar things because I'm an engineer, but I think if actually the, if this is going to be an official motion, I don't know that the first sentence up on the top needs to be part of the motion. Um, I, I think that the first, if it's for an official motion, the piece on top should just be the the legislative committee is requesting the the following that yeah it's kind of the have, preamble that we have uh, the whereas colon, where yeah i'm exactly but again i hesitate to comment on grammar micah can probably help with grammar yeah yeah micah go ahead I wasn't going to really speak to the grammar, but I definitely agree with you on that, Roger, that the, the first sentence is probably not necessary. It's just information um, in what you're seeking. I did want to comment on items 2, C, and D and, and maybe get a little more clarification on what those mean. Um, informing the effects of including code language and legislation. As a former council member, I would try to drive towards not including code language at all in legislation, just provide the policy direction or directive and let the tags or subject matter experts develop that code language at all. So I, so if that's what your intent to go towards, great. But um, my concern there is this is not clear and it may be taken as, hey, this would be better code language based on the opinion of the legislative committee i understand all of you may be subject to experts but I, I i don't know if that's clear on your intent um and, and how that could be taken because i think the ultimate goal as we've spoken before especially i've already brought up on the wooey code item the ev item um they're putting code language in the legislation that is is very difficult to work with if they would just give us the policy directive the subject matter experts can develop that language and then on the the second or or item d there i'm really not sure what you were going for there tom on uh what well, actually it wasn't tom i think that was jay putting that in um what do you mean my inform on the structure and status of the i codes is that current legislate or current code changes that are going through um, single exit was thrown around. Yes, one thing went through for single exit. It was way out there. They got together and kind of fixed it at the committee action hearing number two last week in Long Beach. Is that last week already? Um, but it's not at the same level as outlined in the current legislation. So, again, some of that is just very vague and not real clear and just looking for more intent. And maybe that'd be beneficial for the group. Thanks. Have you got some suggestions? As modifying the language, um, no, in the language may be fine on on C and D. It's just, uh, you know, I have concerns on the intent that it may on the intent that it may be a little too vague, especially with item C. Okay, so maybe it's you're getting at that we don't inform the effects of including code language in legislation, but maybe informing when code language is included in legislation. 
I don't know. Maybe that's all the same thing. I guess some of that is just a question to maybe the full council. Um, again, when I was there, my understanding was we didn't want legislation to have code language at all. I, I, have, just wanted the policy. I have a suggestion, but I didn't want to butt in front of Patrick. His hand was up first. So go ahead, Patrick. Um, I was just going to say that I think this is a good example of what I was kind of talking about before. So, and kind of pairing that with Dustin's um, gold doorknob uh, situation. Let's say that there's a bill that says that puts in code language that all doorknobs have to be solid gold. You could testify, say we're neutral to the passage of the bill, but just so you know, like this will codify this. We won't be able to change it. It may have an economic impact or materials might change. And, and unlike other parts of the code, we won't be able to change that going on. And then a legislator might say, well, what if I include a provision that gives you an ability to, to change that as long as you're meeting the intent? Okay. You know, so that's an example. But whereas if you you come in and say, well, we're opposed to this because we don't want any code language in, I think that's where you start getting into the realm of a lot of times when bills are proposing specific code language, it's because there's, you know, there's very good reasons why those backers of the bills are opposed to what the council has done and then they're they're putting it directly because they're they they don't like what happened before they didn't like what the code process did and so they want to make it happen exactly a certain way and in and going to the wooey code which has been brought up a lot i think i don't think the council has realized that that section does allow you to make changes to um the wooey code as long as it doesn't exceed the performance requirements of the code that's in law. And I feel like that's something that um, kind of fell under people's radar. Roger? Well, I am with Micah that I don't believe legislation mm -hmm. should include code language. And I think the WUI code is, is the I'm not going to say the only one because I've only been on the council for a short time, but um, that is the um, the time when we get then when there was code language in it, and the challenge is is the code language um, you know doesn't fit. There are code writers, and um, you know a code has to read, and if there's code language required by the legislator legislature um number one does it then put us are, are they in conflict with something another part of the code and two if in the future if that section of the code ever wants to be changed it can only be changed by the legislature so now the legislature has to go back and make another change um so i don't believe the legislature should get in, into code language in my suggestion on 2c and i believe actually what we are trying to do is inform on the effects of legislation on code language we are not we are not uh yeah i think that we need to flip those we're gonna we're we're talking about the effects of legislation um and that could very well include if they have code language <laughs> The effects of that is as well, that code language may be in conflict with this, and we don't recommend that you put actual code language. Just tell us what you want us to do, and we'll figure out the best way to do it. Um, so I I think that 2C is better that way. And then I actually, uh, I would have, on 2D, to respond to Micah's comments, I guess I thought that it was clear, but inform on code structure. And that's that's the one where, you know, if they're telling us to, like the single exit, they're telling us to put it in the building code. We could the structure of the code. Really, it would be better in the residential code. <laughs> so we understand what you want to do. We're going to tell you here's the here's how the code is uh, organized. You know, don't put it in. Or again, it's kind of telling us tell us what you want to do, and we will figure out the right way to do it um concept so yeah i think that sounds good and i with regard to c i don't think there's going to be any way we can ever prohibit them from putting code language in legislation i think the only thing 
thing we could probably ever do is keep reminding them of, of the consequences of doing it. Micah? Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Patrick and Roger. Right. And I agree with Roger. There's a lot of good points you made there. Um, the WUI code is a great example of, of C and it being a problem. <laughs> um, the single exit, I'm, I'm not so opposed to where that's going to be in the building code. I think the other one that you may be thinking of is the multiplex where they're wanting to force six units to be built out of the residential code only. Um, I think that's an issue. The biggest one for me of examples outside of the WUI code is the EV. Um, it requires specific amperage and rating and, and electrical infrastructure that technically by legislation would have to be enforced by a building official. That violates other state laws where to enforce electrical, you're required to be a journey electrical person in the state and building officials are not. So again, that's where it's kind of, hey, this information, you want EV infrastructure, tell us you want EV infrastructure, don't put that in the code language for building officials who are not legally licensed to enforce electrical um, in the building code. So, at court, and again, that's not proper coordination with LNI that has the majority of the authority for electrical installations in the state outside of, I think, 33, 34 jurisdictions that have an electrical program. So I think what you have on the screen modified there is great. Thanks for the suggestions, Roger and Patrick. Greg? Yeah, I just wanted to offer a suggestion. If you guys are going down this path, I'd recommend having your assistant attorney general present at these legislative meetings because there's a fine line between informing and lobbying. And there's laws that uh, govern very strictly when state funds are used for lobbying. So uh, I think you, uh, from just listening to this conversation, I, I would suggest having your assistant attorney general present to inform you to keep you out of um, legal trouble. Yeah, it's an interesting comment. You know, I mean, I th it's true. Are we using state funds right now, though, other than Dustin's time and um, the Zoom license? Because none of us are paid. But <laughs> we are appointed by the governor. It, it would be great to have an opinion on that. I, I totally agree. Yeah, Todd. Yeah, I think it's a I think it's a good point. Um, so maybe we just need some specific training for everyone on the ledge committee or anyone representing the, the committee. That's that's how again when I was a state employee, and it was very clear. We met with government relations. They laid down the law of what it can cannot say, and um, they didn't necessarily need to be there. But I sure got my hand slapped if I went outside the you know. The limits of, of of that, so I think it's a good point. Uh, Roger, yeah, I agree. It's a good point for us to consider. I my first response would be, if we are only informing on the effects on our code, <laughs> on the SBCC policy, which I think is what we are trying to get to. I don't think that's lobbying, but. Um, I also, my suggestion would be to have Dirk or somebody from the attorney general's uh, part of this conversation, potentially have that, that question answered when we, for the full council, um, when we consider this at the full council level. Yeah, it seems, I agree. It, it seems like if we stick strictly to the technical aspects, of how it interacts with other codes um, and interacts with the council's ability to adopt codes and amendments to the codes, then we should be in the clear, but it'd be great to have that legal opinion too. Micah? That's a great point of the lobbying, but I think we meet the exemptions listed in RCW 29B um, under the lobbying rules. So I, I'm not sure that um, we would need to be concerned about that for this um, activity. Thanks.
Well, if, Roger. if we are getting close, I would request an edit for the top, uh, an introductory sentence. You can leave all of that there because that's kind of the explanation why. But then the actual motion is the legislative committee is requesting to have one, two, three, four. And again, if, if my grammar is not correct, um, yeah, I, I think you're right. And it, if we were just to put the word whereas in the, as the first word of that first sentence up at the top. And then I, oh, I see. Well, Tom, you're more experienced at writing. <laughs> ah, there you go. Yeah. Perfect. And I and I guess I would, as this committee, I mean, we have a quorum. Um, I would make a motion that we uh, present this motion to the full council at the November meeting. That's my motion. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. And I would like to speak to it. I mean, I think all of the conversations we've had are very good. I think we've bandied around a bunch of concepts. We've arrived at where we're at. There may be some other requests at the council level to edit them, but um, I think we're in a pretty good position. I think it describes what we've talked about pretty well. Um, so that's my comment. I'm going to speak to your second. Okay. Yeah, I I agree. I think it kind of gets to the core of you know the most immediate issues here. So, uh, any other discussion on the motion, Dustin? Uh, I wanted to just run this across the group. Do we think this might need to be drafted into our bylaws, or this would just be a policy that we're creating for us to work with? Um, we mentioned that uh, people who come after us may not be aware of the conversations had in these meetings. And if these are drafted into our bylaws, it kind of memorializes it and makes it more easily accessible for uh, future members of this committee and for the public to view. Um, and my only the only other reason I bring that up is if we wanted to draft it into the bylaws, we would need to get the two thirds full council vote um in order to do that and so i just wanted to open that up for a little bit of discussion um i will respond that my motion is what's on the table which is basically at least it's referred to for the 2025 legislative session um i think we should ask for approval for that and i think the next step should we should be talking about integrating that into our uh, policies and procedures not right. Yeah, I think that sounds good. I got a question. I've got a friendly amendment, you know, on number four to kind of reword that just slightly without changing the intent. Um, and then say no authority to take any policy position without the backing of the full council. That's a fine clarification on my. my yeah, support. I'm fine with that. Okay. Any other discussion? So then, all those in favor of bringing this before the council, signify okay. by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, okay. Point of order. Again, I'm not a parliamentarian. If we only have four, does it require that the uh, that Tom vote? Um, I guess I've been voting all along. <laughs> I'd have to research that one um, to get the answer. I don't think it's inappropriate for him to vote, but if we need it, I don't have the the straight answer to that one. 
I just know that we had a, uh, a big issue last year about the chairman not voting and not getting approved number of, of yeas. For a quorum? Oh, did we lose our quorum? I guess we did. The, the quorum yeah. is four, Tom. Yeah, so. so, well, I did vote. Okay, all right. Affirmatively, so there was okay. no, no opposition. All right. All right, let's move on to other business. We've got two things, I think. One is the proposed legislation uh, that Dustin sent out, and I, apparently some of, some of you may have seen it before this morning. And then there was the, uh, the single exit tag yeah. issue. Um, Tom, if I could, I think the single exit can be handled relatively quickly. Okay, let's do that then. Um, I have been doing, so I have agreed to be the chair of the single exit tag, if that's what we're going to name it. Um, I've been doing some digging in the RCWs to figure out where that is, what exactly this tag is supposed to do. Um, and there's some, if I can, let me pull up my notes that I made for myself. Um, yeah, that's not it. Um, So RCW 1927-115 says that we're supposed to form a technical advisory group and and should, can I share? Yeah, let me stop my share and you should uh, be able to share your screen now. Can you see my word version there? I can. Yes, sir. Yep. Put up a little bit. So. 1927-115, the State Building Code Council should convene a technical advisory group uh, for the purpose of recommending modifications and limitations to the International Building Code that would allow for a single exit stairway um, up to six stories above grade plane. So that is pretty straightforward. I'm not going to get into how we're going to do that or anything. Um, this is one where modifications and limitations to the International Building Code. And I think we're going to be talking about the International Residential Code as well. But um, I will deal with that when we go a little bit farther. Then there are some conversations about middle housing requirements. I have dug into the House bill. And I, and I will say I have not copied and pasted everything, <laughs> the full House bill language. I tried to cut and paste what I felt like was relevant. Um, and then I also did the RCW, the, which is also the middle housing. Um, and really, my understanding is, is RCW 36 is really only for zoning. So there really is nothing in the building code or the residential code that would be impacted by the middle housing. Now, Micah mentioned multiplex, six units, residential code. What I'm asking for with this group, because you are all very intelligent on a, a lot of different um, areas, is where else do I need to look to just kind of gather my, um, get my arms around what the scope of this committee will be asked to do. Um, so I, I'm, Tom, I'm going to go ahead and call on Todd. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I think Michael will jump in here too, and Michael we can go back and forth. So there's there's two parts here. You're you're referencing the 2023 bill that said there shall be in the IBC the six story single exit. The second bill from 2022, which is so that that bill is 5491. The second bill was from this year was 2071 that said, you know, we shall put in the residential code up to six plex, and I, I, that might be very specific. You're correct. House Bill 1110 is Growth Management Act. More, it's, it's more zoning related. So they they do overlap, and cities have to deal with these 
essentially together and they do fit together in the sense that they're middle housing, but they are technically uh, different different things. Um, and the last thing I'll put there is, is at the executive committee, I believe, is where we made the decision. And I, I did advocate for this, that we have one technical advisor group that, that tries to deal with both. If at some point it becomes, you know, um, that that's too much for one tag. Um, but that's why we did it was to try to be have some consistency, even though we're dealing with multiple codes. We're dealing with the IRC and the IBC and, in my opinion, the IFC also. So, Micah, what did I say were incorrect there? I think you captured it. Uh, I don't really have much to add uh, other than, Roger, I think you were looking for RCW on the multiplex one that would affect yeah. the building code and not the land use codes. That's RCW 1927-800. Okay. And that's where you're going to find the information on the multiplex for the building code. Uh, and it leads you to engrossed subs or second, excuse me, substitute house bill 2071. So that should get you the information on that that you're looking for. And then the single exit, yeah, you've already captured that one. And then, of course, yeah. the one we brought up previously that Dustin's mentioned, and, and I don't think it's going to be this tag, but is the dwelling unit size um, tag that is required by 1927-801. And I'm not sure where that's going to land, but that's another one that has to be looked at at some point for legislation. Thanks. That That's the input I was asking for. Todd, you said that there were, is 5491 the single exit stair correct that's the 2023 bill okay substitute senate bill 5491 and that's okay. the rcw that you're not this one you're looking at here but the first one i think and then the 2023 bill was the 2071 that okay mike i just referenced yeah that helps me i will continue to pull that information together as we discuss forming the the tag and moving okay. forward but and to your to your question earlier, shall we call it the single exit? No, it's actually both things. I think Micah's referring to one as the as the multiplex as one bill. S E M P tag. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if we've named it yet, but yeah. <laughs> okay, that's that's all I needed from this group. I appreciate the input. I'll I'm sure we'll have more conversations as we move forward. Uh, Micah. Just on the single exit item, I know that Dwabo has submitted a, a proposal for that. And I was just going to ask Dustin if you had an opportunity to post that. There's a lot of folks nationally that are requesting to see that. And um, I'd like to steer them to the SBCC website for the code change proposals. Uh, obviously, not just the single exit, but <laughs> any of them. But it would be nice if that was on the 2024 um proposal website if possible thanks i can Here's see that up there for you guys um you know i hadn't posted it because i was including it in the uh, group two stuff so i do have a few group two proposals including the single exit um and so i can get that online for you guys just justin and mike i can clarify because the single exit wobble proposal is posted obviously because that's part of abc are you saying there's a proposal already for multiplex that's not posted no, 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 no. I think you're still working on single it. exit stair. Um, I don't believe it was posted as part of the IBC tag, and uh, the intent was to take that proposal to the specialized tag. So the proposal is posted there as part of the IBC group, and the motion was made to defer that out to that um, specialized tag. Okay, because I have pointed, Micah, to your point, other people nationally towards that link. Cool. I thought. I think there'll be some more documentation brought in for the single exit. They did take some, I think, beneficial action at the committee action hearing too for ICC last week um, that did some simple modifications to go up to four-story um, single exit really quick mm -hmm. and then maybe some more robust stuff for up to six-story coming from the WABO proposal. But I think- Micah, when is that posted? I, those aren't posted yet, right? The um the, yeah, they're posted. yeah you have to go into cdp access for icc and Got it. the i want to say they did a floor modification to the original proposals 
and the original comment. So yeah, there's a way to get there. It's a roundabout way. I could help you if you want to meet offline. <laughs> so I forgot. I've done it before. I helped the, the deep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, just Dustin, I wonder at some point, would it make sense then if there could be a, a separate ad hoc page and then that proposal could get also posted there so it's easy to find and then when other proposals get submitted. We can do that. We're, I'm trying to marshal the uh, admins to to update our tag pages. They're they're woefully out of date, and so um, we're we're getting a little bit of breathing room as we come to the end of our um, initial group one proposals reviews, and uh, so they're not so busy doing minutes and things every day. Um, I will uh, um, try to get that done sooner than later. And I've I've had a question. Once we open up this ad hoc tag. Um, is there opportunity for others to post proposed amendments? Yes. So technically, the WABO is 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 a, an external proposal submitted to the IBC. Anyone could technically propose, a, or we could request for anyone if they want to propose amendments. Correct. Okay. So what we're saying is that tag will be part of Group Two, and and the same process for any other tag and and proposed amendments. Well, I guess I'm asking if it is. I mean, I think it. I think because it's legislative mandated, we technically get open at any time. And and yeah, if we're going to get started, it'd be good to start seeking information on the multiplex also, maybe even before the IRC. I, I guess I I question whether or not it should just be an IRC proposal, even though the, the, the mandate says it will be in the IRC. It also could be references out of the IRC to IBC and IFC and so forth, and I worry that we're, we're going to close those books before we and you're going to have to open them back up to put put amendments to them right well i guess the thought process on um, the the i guess aligning it with group two uh but not necessarily including it in group two is that it's a legislative mandate and it can occur outside of our normal cycle um, it is intended to kind of run concurrently with the group two stuff so that it all finishes at the same time um, sure. but there is, there is room for modification to that, um, thought process there. Well, I, I, I am fine. I appreciate all the input. Dustin, I will look for the November council meeting, I think, to define that tag better, um, including the comp probably the conversation of who the tag, who's going to make up the tag officially, get the official name. Um, and I would like to draft a scope. That's why I'm digging into the RCWs is I want to be really clear what the tag is being asked to do. And I would like in the November meeting, the council to approve that. So I will try to dig into this information and maybe send it to um, Todd and Micah and, and you, Dustin, and just get that clear so that we can make a clear proposal to the full council in November. Next week. Okay. Thank you all. Micah? Thanks. I, I'm just, as I share my opinion always, I definitely think that if we can get this tag wrapped up and approved at the next council meeting, that you should also look at opening the application period and opening it up for proposals. I think that if we wait to open proposal timeline for this up to the group two proposal timeline, that it's it's going to be pressured to get it done by December of next year. Um, again, we've had work groups involved in working on this already. It's a lot of time and effort. The single exit may be a little easier, but the multiplex thing is is very complex, and I'm concerned about how much time it's going to take, and if we wait that long, that we may not be able to get it done. So I'm just encouraging you all, if possible, get this tag approved and get the application period open and get proposal period open for these because it is a, it's a complex item. Thanks. And folks are requesting it already. <laughs> Just to add one more thing. Like, is this is this a tag open for application already? I've had those questions from a few people. So the sooner the better. Thank you. Thanks, Becca. Angel. Um, yeah, I guess I was kind of gonna ask the same thing um as Mike is because it's something I hadn't asked is 
is there going to be a separate like a posted submittal window for these two because we don't want to get into a place where you know obviously one or two people have submitted stuff and other people are like oh wait we didn't even know that we could you know submit it or and things slide in at you know after the fact so so I was just going to say yeah we need to post a submittal window for those to make it official for people to submit any pr proposals they have Todd, I beat you to it. Uh, so Micah and Angela, we have an executive committee meeting tomorrow. My hope is that I will spend some time today putting together a potential tag um, list, like who should represent for discussion at the executive committee meeting tomorrow. Um, if we can kind of come out of that with a schedule and a formation of the tag at the executive committee meeting tomorrow, and that'll have to be other business, Dustin, since I haven't proposed that, um, then, um, you know, hopefully we can hit the ground running at November and open it up for applications and proposals. So that that's my hope. We'll, I'll, I'll keep pushing as hard as I can, so. Go ahead, Angela, if you have a response, sorry. I was just going to say, we've already decided who the tag member groups are, correct, at the last meeting. So you're just going to need to then open it up for application at this point, correct? I was going to go back. I think that we did. Um, I wasn't assigned to the chair at that position at that time. So I maybe didn't pay that close of attention. <laughs> Yeah, because I just remember we had the discussion yeah. where we kind of negotiated yes. some spots <laughs> around. Right, you're so, right. Okay, just making sure. Yep, thank you. So real quick on that, uh, I was just going to, it is relevant to get going also, just in case there's an aspect of the legislature on something that needs to be tweaked. So if something becomes a roadblock that we don't think, and that's why the legislative committee should talk about this, is there make sure there's time in the long session to, to tweak it. For example, number of stories is prescriptive in the single stair. I think it's fine, but if it's not, let's talk about it. If it should not be in the residential code, that's a big thing, but. And I will add, maybe that is our legislative, or our, yeah, our legislative committee making that recommendation of changing it to residential and building code you know so that we can there's changes anyway i i agree good point any more discussion on this topic good all right dustin what do you got for us uh well so for this next topic of discussion um it seems that, you know, our letter out to Representative Dewar was heard and they are reaching out um, for some input on a draft bill. Uh, one of the conundrums I feel that I'm facing at this moment is how appropriate is it to share out that document um, that's a draft bill um, for, you know, I guess public consumption. So if we share that bill on the screen today, um, I, I, I don't know, I feel that maybe I might be overstepping my bounds, uh, by sharing something that is not, um, published and ready for public consumption yet. So I did share that out with the legislative committee. I don't know how we can engage this group, um, without sharing some of that. We can, we can talk about it, but as far as, um, if we wanted to act as a group to, um, address any concerns with our policy and procedure, we necessarily have to kind of discuss it at a open public meeting. And so um, I, I sent out a follow-up e email uh, saying that I'd like to maybe uh, table this for the moment, um, but I'd like to, I guess, open up the discussion with the group here um, have, with how they feel we should engage if if the legislatures are reaching out to us and saying we would like some input on this bill what is the the group think the most appropriate method for us to engage with that and is it appropriate to share um the draft document 
on screen here today. And so um, i start with that because um, I, I feel like I've got a little bit of a conundrum I'm facing today. I, I just want to just say before Roger, sorry to jump in, that I think that it's already a public record because you have it. Correct. Anybody could do a, a records request and get it at this point. So um, whether or not we want to draw attention to it in addition to that is the question, but the legality of it already being in the public domain is pretty clear to me anyway. Roger? Well, I was, uh, when you sent the first email, and I haven't been monitoring my email, so I didn't see your second one, but um, I wondered the same thing is, are we giving more, um, are we weighing in on it? Why are we not weighing in on any other perspective? Um, and I, and I think you maybe answered that. So were we asked, did Representative Dewar send it to you and say, please provide us input? Um, and then what it really, the, the com, in my opinion, particularly after the conversation we just had, would be reviewing it specifically for how it would fit within our current code. Um, and, you know, are there uh, the technical aspects of could we do it? Um, are you how we could do it? Uh, where the, you know, where, which code it would go into kind of those types of things that we could maybe give some of our, our thoughts on to her on that, but not opine on the whether it is a good bill to pass or not so i'm i don't have a strong knowledge or opinion on what's public what's not so So I don't have a necessarily direct ask for input on this. I know that this has uh, circulated a little bit before it actually came to my inbox and there was some input given um, on the content of it. And so, um, you know, I, I think that Tom has a, a great point that, you know, the fact that we have it uh, does make it a public record. Um, so, you know, I'm I'm willing to share it, but I'm I'm hesitant. You know, I don't want to step on um, somebody's toes that is uh, uh, looking to work with us, and I don't want to derail their process by sharing a document in in uh, necessarily a setting to bring in more exposure. So, um, you know, I, I, Jay, I, I'll yield to you at the moment. Yeah, and I. I um... Really appreciate what you're saying, Dustin, is that we're now having an example of the legislature reaching out to us early, which is something we want to encourage. And my, my suggestion for this is that when you receive something like this, just simply ask. It's like, can I share this in a public meeting with our legislative committee? That would be the most effective way to get feedback um, versus... Um, whatever input that you could provide as staff, but I would ask and, and and legislators would be able to identify whether something is sensitive enough or if they'd rather have the input, but I would make it their call. Yeah. Todd? Yeah, for transparency here, this, this embodied carbon you know, topic, we've already you know addressed it. We had a presentation based on different legislation, you know, in the state, the whole council last month, right? So we've talked about some of this, and I think it is appropriate that the legislative committee start to dive a, a little deeper if, if requested on, on how this translates into actual, um, you know, policy language related to what's being asked of the code, since it is a code development ac activity. But just ask, ask out of courtesy with the staff and the representative. So as far as movement forward on this one, um, I'll reach out to Representative Dewar, see if she's okay with sharing this, and then um, we can bring back at a, at a future meeting um, to discuss this one, and we can get that scheduled after our next council meeting. 
um, and, and get some input. I know that there's been some individual input from some of the members of our group here, but they received this prior to this coming to my inbox um, directly. And um, so there's been some input from council members, but not from what I would say the council. And so um, I, I will, I'll move forward with it and with that in mind, I'll, uh, uh, I'll speak with Representative Dewar on this one and, and uh, get a blessing before we bring it up at the meeting. Yeah, and you bring up a good point, I think, too, that let's get the authority from the council to make these comments before we actually do it. <laughs> So after the next council meeting, you know, presuming that, you know, they're in favor of us doing what we've discussed in the last discussion, then we can go forward with this request from Representative Dewar if necessary. So Todd. Right. And I hope I hope I'm hearing we are gonna talk about it at the full council because we do have to move quickly. If we wanna be right, we wanna inform bills are gonna drop in December. So well, we can bring it to the council meeting. It's not too late to do that. I would uh, uh, just still reach out to Representative Dewar on this one before um, that, and I can include you guys in the, uh, the communications there. Roger. Dustin, you're thinking of bringing it to the full council? Well, either that or we can uh, convene this group one more time before that to, to address this one after I can reach out to her. Yeah. It seems to me like we need to have the authority to address it from the council before we address it. Yeah. So to me, it seems like the timing ought to be that we go through the council meeting, we get the authority to address these issues like this. And then directly after that, we get working on it. If, Which... if Representative Durr is, if that's what they're asking for. That's what I had in mind. Yeah. And I totally agree with Tom. And um, then kind of my next related next comment, which is a little bit related, is um, I, I remember that the uh, Legislative Committee <coughs> last session was meeting weekly. Um, should we today start talking about meetings in November, December, and start trying to find a time that we kind of set up for our meeting schedule, whether it's weekly or uh, whatever. Should we address that? At least the initial one, uh, should we have any meetings in November, December, and then start considering what we should do when the when the session is actually in? Yeah, that's a good point. We should really do that. And I would suggest, and Todd, I'll get to you there, that we try and do a weekly thing. And it's much easier for me to cancel a meeting than to drop one in. You know, and so if we can come up with something that way, too, if the council does grant us, you know, the authority to go forward with these things, then we can just hit it and we don't have to start over at that point. So, Todd? Yep, no, I agree with that. And, and I think um, it also for transition because into the year we lose people, including me, so that we think we've already been ahead of transitioning. So be nice to meet. So would it work for this group if we go through the next council meeting, have this topic there, and then um, maybe the week after convene this group again and talk about the rest of, um, well, let me look at my calendar, make sure I'm not, trying to schedule us on Thanksgiving day or anything. Um, so we have a week after the council, we could meet on the 20th um, and discuss scheduling and maybe potential future meetings throughout December. Um, I'm thinking like maybe two in December if we want, if we have some strategy and if we don't need them, um, we can drop them like Tom said. Yeah, I don't, what, what's the, what day were you thinking here? I'm thinking the 20th of November be the next meeting of this group and we can discuss the outcome of the council um, meeting and also set a schedule for the rest of this year and we can have the uh, ideas pitched for our meetings throughout the legislative session. Uh, they have happened every week in the past um, as far as I'm aware. 
um, during that session. And I believe it, they were happening on, on Thursdays um, for that stuff. So um, if we were going to continue that tradition, um, I'm okay with that. I just, uh, I, I would like to make sure that um, we are establishing quorum at most of those meetings. I, in the last session, there's some of the uh, quorum wasn't happening. And so there wasn't a lot of business that could actually transact during the meetings. And, um, and I think that that was kind of stemming from the fact that there was not a lot of authority to act during that section during the session so um if we can have robust meetings i'm i'm all for having them every week but if they're just meetings to come in and talk about stuff and not have a quorum um we're short staffed and and tight on time as far as uh you know uh, micah's point you know getting everything finished by december um, I'm looking to revamp the schedule of our um, group two to align with some of the delays that we've had in uh, 2024. And, you know, the, the goal is, I guess, to be uh, looking at our uh, final deadline of uh, the end of November or December 1st next year and working backwards to make sure that we have some time and some fudge factor in there. And, um, you know, it's it's likely that we're going to have legislative session going plus group two activities within the tags going. So the, the next couple months in 2025 are going to be some busy times uh, for SBCC as a uh, group. And so um, it'll be a, a bit of a challenge I, I am anticipating, but um, one that I don't think is insurmountable. So um, I'm, I'm still trying to visualize all of that at the moment. Are you thinking when? Wednesdays then as the day that would work. Um, I, I this will be my first legislative session, being the the guy at the helm here, uh, for SBCC staff, and I believe that the tradition was to have them on Thursdays, um, because of I believe the uh schedule of the uh legislative session that they uh. I can't remember exactly what comes out on Wednesdays, but it comes out and then we get to uh, review the the movement of the bills uh, on Thursday uh, with the freshest information. Okay. So the 21st is a Thursday. I'm just oh. for the record, I'm going to be uh, at County Leaders um, Conference all next week, well, Monday through Thursday. I think I misunderstood you, Tom. I was talking about during the legislative session. If we're talking about the rest of this year, Wednesdays works just fine. Okay. Well, nonetheless, if next Wednesday, I'll be at a conference and I won't be able okay. to be here, so somebody else could share. Well, we can we can shift a little bit. Uh, if we can do a morning meeting on Thursday, if you're available, um, we're st I'm still anticipating some IBC work happening on Thursday, or pretty much mornings every day of the week. Uh, I can I can fit stuff in. I have a standing meeting at 1030 on Thursdays. Okay. The only day that really works for me next week is, is that next week or that week is Friday. It's Friday. No. Um, I'm available for it and we can um, have it any day, any time on Friday as well. Um, I'm available. Do we want to try a morning, morning meeting on the 22nd? Okay. Does that work with everybody? Okay. And is two hours work for everybody, um, like a 10 till noon? Or do we want to do nine again? Nine works for me. I'm all about nine. Nine's okay with me. Earlier, but... That works for everybody. Okay. Um, I'll, you'll see that one coming out here um, pretty quick after this meeting today. Okay. Well, I guess that's actually a holiday, too. <laughs> um, that's the day after Thanksgiving. Oh, uh, Thanksgiving is, is the twenty eighth. Oh yeah, no, I yeah, I'm I'm looking at a condensed calendar, and it's all kind of <laughs> yeah. So you're right. Thank you. So yeah. the twenty second is not a holiday. Correct. It's a meeting day. <laughs> okay. Okay, 22nd, 9 to 11, we'll get that uh, placeholder out to you guys. And um, as far as agenda creation, I anticipate we'll I'll have better um, outlook on it after our uh, council meeting um, next week.
Okay. Is there any other other business? Well, then it looks like we're done 11 minutes early, which is nice. Yeah. So enjoy the extra time. And All we'll right. I appreciate the conversation to guys, everybody, or today, everybody.